Hello, everyone. Welcome to an action-packed, non-stop express ride here on ARG Presents. Do you like games? Do you like high-pitch, high-fast, super graphic games? This is the show for you. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by a man that, unfortunately, much like today's subject matter, is old, slow, archaic. We call him good old punch card Brent. How's it going, I Brent? I am from the 70s. I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm pumped. I'm amped. I'm ready to rock and roll. I can't be stopped today because we spun the wheel, Brent. We made the exciting, the incredible deal last week. Thanks to the you. The unholy deal. Thanks to your forethought, your deep study, we will be playing games on a system that gets a little coverage. It's a crime. It's a crime that the games haven't been seen until today. But today, we will unveil these games, Brent, because, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the NASCOM. The NASCOM yes. 1 and 2, Brent. What do you think about it? Uh, You know, before we got into this, if someone would have said, hey, Brent, what's a NASCOM? I would have said, that's a NASA thing, right? Yes, Which it, it actually it sort is. of is, yeah. with an extra S, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but if you if they would have been like, no, man, it's like a kick computer from the 70s. I'd been like, oh? <laughs> but after... Uh, learning about it, and seeing some of the people in this community uh, that are incredibly passionate about uh, these little things, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing that these things ever existed uh, and that there are still some functional in the world. You've got to be passionate about the NASCOM, Brent, as we are, of course. So, if you're like me, when this came up on the wheel last week, well, my first thought was, let's strangle Brent. That was my first thought. <laughs> And then as the week rolled on, I left strangling and went straight to stabbing. <laughs> and because emulating this was not easy. This was the 11th. It was, I will say, Brent saved us at the 11th hour. Uh, I had tried, there were there were two or three emulators for this. You've got a Java one. You've got one that was made for the Windows 95 and 98. That was a prominent one, by the way. Yeah. And, and then you've got uh, uh, MAME support. And I use that as loose as sense. And I couldn't get Jack Squat to run on this machine. And then Brent showed up. I don't know how you did it, Brent, but he did find something that had some games. And so we were able to look over some games the NASCOM. Let's learn about this. Then we'll talk about the games we're going to take a look at today. So if you're like me, you've never heard of this thing. This was a this was a kit computer, Brent. Which, yes. Explain to the people what that means exactly. They you you send them money and they send you a pile of parts and, and tell you to have a good old time. That's right. You basically have to Lego your computer together before you can use your computer. Correct, correct. Now, uh, this was of course a UK <laughs> joint because hey, and we didn't know that either. By the way, uh, this came out around seventy eight, and it was put yeah. together by a fellow named Chris Shelton. Now he was basically approached uh, by an outfit called NASCO, Brent. Uh, NASCO stands for the North American Semiconductor Company, which hilariously is British. So much like <laughs> yeah. U.S. Gold, yeah. <laughs> a British company named North American something always gets me. But they approached him, like, and, and they worked out a deal for him to put this kit computer together. It's funny, I, I read a couple articles about this Chris Shelton. You don't hear him talked about with your... Uh, 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 Klaus and Claire's that you know that in that company, but this guy really was sort of an innovator. So close, Aaron. He was so close yeah. to being there. And the funny thing is, it, when you look into NASCOMs one and two, and, and there was a three, these actually developed into pretty capable, fairly modern for the time uh, machines. They I mean Absolutely. these things, these things right out of the gate. It's not like they were duds, and you could put them together. So. Just to give you a quick look at what these things were, so I'm gonna look. We'll look at the NASCOM one. There are some subtle differences uh, between the two. So, one thing you're gonna understand about the NASCOM is these didn't come with a case. Okay, these this was you literally built the motherboard, uh, it and hooked up the keyboard, and then you were expected to either make a case or do what I would have done, which is sit the naked computer on your desk, <laughs> surrounded by uh, old Mountain Dew cans. And 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 uh, the remnants of uh, yesterday's pizza, well, we, and almost inevitably you would have dumped stuff on the board. Uh, again, these came out in '78. Uh, a Z80 processor, Brent, uh, one or two megahertz uh, uh, speed on these things. 
Now, originally, the NASCAR 1 shipped with a K of RAM, a K of VRAM, and, and one or two K of ROM. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the text modes on this, 48 characters by 16. Of course, it was monochrome, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, it had a t TV uh, UHF video interface. But again, the one thing about these this kit computer was uh, uh, is that th these things were heavily modified. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, now this kit, mm -hmm. this kit uh, didn't come with a power supply. You had to pull that out, uh, and you could get all sorts of uh, additional, you know, uh, I/O for it. You're looking yes. at at the time of release when this thing was going for just about 200 pounds. And not at which, if you think about it, this is the era where computers cost 18 kajillion dollars. Yeah, so, yeah, it was rarely reasonable at the time. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, this was this ended up being a pretty big deal in the UK. I mean, it did quite well, and they, like I said, these kit computers people would take them, and they would they would put them in all sorts of different cases. When I was looking this thing up, it was amazing the amount of uh, of uh, cases you could find for this thing. People would make them out of metal. They would make them out of wood, much like yep. you, much like you did. It's that they looked way better. Uh, because they would stain the wood, make it look nice. Uh, mm -hmm. They had all sorts. These, these came with, and so like I said, some people just had them in a box, you know, laying there. Uh, but people, I, it's funny, I was reading the comments on some of these, and people were saying like, oh yeah, I developed a sound card for my NASCOM. Oh yeah, I developed a color graphics card for my NASCOM, or, or an adapter, or whatever. So these were heavily uh, edited, and, and you're talking to people that would buy something like this, were your top shelf geeks of the day you know pioneers that's These right. people were pioneers because you know as computers have evolved they started as, as a lot of these uh uh put together at home computers before our time obviously uh you know we never did anything like that <clears throat> and I then did do kits I, i'm not computers but i put together my own multimeter i put together my own crystal radio you know that stuff so they they were still, but those sorts of kits are not on the same level. Oh as this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then if you flash forward, you know, a couple decades, we fought with our cues and you know that kind of settings, having to manage your own RAM and stuff. Yeah. So we experienced that era of computing completely different level. I'm not even comparing the two. I'm just saying the uh, the uh, flow of technology. And then today, you know, what are What's hard to do on a computer, right? Yeah. It, it, computers, it, it's completely been refined. Yeah. So my hat's off to all these NASCOM owners who not only successfully assembled their kits, but the ones who modified them and added to them and you know tweaked this and tweaked that and shared that information. Because it really, it all boils down. It's all part of the history of computing. You know, it's funny. Because from I was reading out how the why they uh, NASCO decided to get into this thing, and basically what from what I read they looked at the people for NASCO looked in America and saw all the different uh, user groups over here and all the little uh, computer user groups that were around and they didn't see the same thing in the UK and they thought heck we could get that kind of action we could get on the ground floor, and that was sort of their basis for putting this together, and I think it worked. Uh, aside, listen to this, Brent. To, to, just to assemble this thing, of course. Why did they sell it as a kit to minimize the cost? Okay. Yes. Here's where they minimized it: to assemble the the uh, uh, NASCOM one, you had to hand solder about three thousand joints on that yeah. circuit board. Crazy, isn't it? Now, uh, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of soldering. Uh, you yeah. Know. Uh, it's, especially when you had, you're probably, you know, solder's come a long way too, in terms of the, in terms of the irons and stuff from back in those days. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a lot of action. These things could do a lot of stuff amongst, uh, the things they could do. Uh, you could get basic for them, Pascal, C, Forth. They had a lot of different programming languages that were like ported over to them. And uh, a lot of people wrote their own assemblers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was... The, you're right. I mean, really, this kind of shows you how much different uh, things things are uh, than they used to be in terms of uh, uh, working on this sort of thing. Uh, Real this, quick, yeah. I want to go over a, a story I heard yeah. uh, while I was researching this stuff. <clears throat> there was a guy that had bought a kit, right? And he, he tried to put it together, and he never got it functioning, right? So he put it in a box, you know, and he, was, he wasn't really in with one of these communities, 
But, uh, you know, when, when people found out you had a NASCOM or a kit, they kind of said, oh, you know, how's it going? You know, how are you working with it? And the guy was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell it for parts. I can't get it working. And they said, no, 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 let's, let's look at it. Let's sit down. Let's get it together. And it was a community effort. It was a community effort to get this guy's computer up and running. And uh, <clears throat> it was such a moving story about how basically complete strangers were at this dude's house. And it's like, oh, okay, I see a problem here. You know, I know this needs to go over there. And got the computer completely assembled for this dude. And they worked on a case and got him up and running and got him, you know, a computer from a broken pile of parts. That really talks about the community that was that was going on at this time. Hey, listen, I don't want to toot our, I don't want to toot our own horn here. Man, that's, man. A, that's the kind of feeling I get about uh, our uh, our family here. I, have, I can't tell you how many times we've sent crap up to, like, Jason Warren, for example, or got technical support. So the spirit... It's awesome. The yeah. spirit of those computer pioneers lives on. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. There you go. There are definitely pockets of people who are still out there helping each other, uh, uh, making this stuff work, and, and it's it's uh, it's endearing. It really is. Absolutely. I, 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 it's an impressive community, and it, it's amazing to see what it has grown out of uh, and what it has become. It's the spirit is certainly still there. Let's let's talk about the uh, successor uh, when the, the NASCOM one discontinued in seventy nine. Here comes the NASCOM two, and you can see if you're watching at home, this picture is this is another homemade case uh, for the NASCOM yes. two. Now the NASCOM two again released in seventy nine. This had built in Microsoft Basic right right out of the gate. Of course, you got your keyboard. This had a Zilog uh, Z eighty A. 4 megahertz, so you've got a, a, a double the processing power, effectively. 9K of memory, expandable up to 32K, and trust me when I tell you they expanded it further. Uh, uh, 1K of video RAM, uh, 10K of ROM, right? Because uh, you've got basic built in. Uh, you've also got, you do have a graphics mode in, on this one, which is nice. This one does have a serial uh, line on it. You've got uh, 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 the ability to load off cassettes, you know. So this was uh, this was a substantial upgrade in a lot of ways. But you kept the uh, you kept the compatibility there, uh, and was it, but this was a this was eighteen months later. Basically, it took them eighteen months to get this thing figured out. But you've really expanded the heck out of this thing, uh, and you've got something uh, hot, hot looking computer here yeah. now. <clears throat> The sad thing is... They didn't all look that good, by the way. No, they did not. <laughs> like I said, there's a you've got computers that look like someone like, let's say, Retro Man Cave put them together, and then you've got something that looks like the sketchy tech put it together. I'll let you know. And this <laughs> we're, we're, What we're looking at here is more of your Retro Man Cave. <clears throat> and for, so here's 79. NASCOM has literally released a Triumph. Okay? I mean, this is quite a machine. Yes. Uh, this thing has the ability to, uh, to, be, uh, to support memory cards, Graphics cards, uh, floppy disks, you know, the whole enchilada. So you've got a, what you've got here is a proper computer. And sure enough, uh, in 1980, NASCOM Limited, the company, met with difficulties in getting components, specifically yep. RAM. And so eventually, this did them no favors. And eventually, they were sold to Lucas Limited. Now, if it, you'll, if as we were researching this, I kept ca coming across things called the Lucas NASCOM. That's where this comes from, because the NASCOM, as a computer company, was sold to Lucas. Uh, and so, eventually, uh, they actually uh, they had a cased version of the NASCOM 2 that ended up being the NASCOM 3. Yeah. So, <clears throat> there you go. It was, it, I mean, it was a NASCOM 2 with a with a case, right? Right. And what you're, if you're watching at home, the <clears throat> picture on the screen there, that is the uh, innards. Uh, that's basically the board for a NASCOM uh, 2, or and really the 2 and the 3 were affected with the same thing. Just The same case. thing, yeah. Now, with all that said, uh, there were games released for this. Now, uh, we sort of went over the gory details <clears throat> about how difficult it was to first to emulate this. Now, the funny thing about this is, uh, once you understand the basics of the NASCOM, you would think it's difficult. The problem I had basically was under, getting the emulators to understand uh, how to accept 
the uh, the the media that I was trying to give it cassettes and and discs and and yeah. whatnot. Uh, you uh, the the commands you type in are nutty. You know, there it's early DOSy type stuff that you have to sort of uh, learn. Just running stuff requires you to run like you would type in like a memory address to get to run. And, like there's one common one that you would type in to get stuff to work. <clears throat> so the learning curve was high. Now. Brent, I believe you told me there were 42 games released on this thing. Uh, uh, it was something like that, something yeah. And, that... And, and the thing is, is a lot of the games uh, have been made within the last decade. Oh, really? Uh, or the, none, a lot of the, none of the ones really amazing ones. Yeah. None of the ones we played uh, were made. No, that. no. Our, I believe ours were all uh, of the era or, you know, <clears throat> mid-80s. Yeah. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, I've got a list here of the games. And one thing you're going to realize, and this this seems to be the uh, this seems to be the way it is on a lot of these really really old computers, is that what you've got a lot of are ports, just are arcade clones, all right. And so I think everything we're playing today, except that's not true. We've got one no. in here that's original, but you've got a lot of ports, and you've also got a lot of text adventures. Yes. Right. Uh, and and all all the ones you would expect. Uh, to have been ported in the early days were, were, were ported over. But, I mean, you've got stuff like uh, the the old Eliza. That's on here. You know, the old uh, talk to the psychiatrist thing. Uh, Lord, you know, uh, you've got stuff like uh, uh, Othello and Pac-Man. You know, stuff like that. I mean, stuff you would expect to see on one of these things. You've got to have a game named Star Trek, for example. You know, <laughs> that's just that's a must. Did you try any of the text adventures, Aaron? I did. I did. I, I, could you get anywhere on them? No, gosh, no. Uh, yeah, I, the 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 commands. I mean, it's it really gives you a uh, a bit of a uh, uh, insight into more modern uh, text adventures. Yeah, I were doing commands that made complete sense to me, like get or pick up, and they were like. We don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, these were it's like, like the, what these, do you want? <laughs> these were sort of like they felt like they had been poured over, like directly from the old mainframes at the local college. You know yeah. that shtick. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, uh, I would I would say the games I saw. There's also very very uh, limited footage of anyone playing games. So all the all the footage they got is stuff I generated, except for this little blurb right here that someone put together. Um, I would put these games somewhere, I would say a step or two below uh, the uh, the TRS-80 model one and three slash uh, Dick Smith's uh, Super 80 or System 80. They're they're right there. They're, I mean, they're not that far off. They're just the resolution's a little lower, uh, and the sound's not as good because there was no sound. Uh, right. But uh, um, uh, they they were better than I would have anticipated. In fact, I was surprised at the uh, the, the girth, the amount of games that were available for. Uh, you know, you, when you hear something is a kit computer from the 70s, like, my hopes were low. And yeah. I will say this thing surpassed them in the ability to do anything, you know? Yeah. Because you don't think about computers. And, they, of course, if you think mm -hmm. about it, the Atari computers come from the 70s, the 8-bits. And, of course, they were awesome. So, you know, of course, you've got the jack of Atari behind it. This is basically put together by a dude. But yeah. the, this thing was formidable. It was a decent it little was. machine, you know. It absolutely was. Uh, uh, and, and that was a surprise to me. I will say that was a that was a big surprise. Uh, so with all that in mind, uh, Brent, let's go ahead and talk about what we ended up getting into. Now, tell the people what how, what how you stumbled across what we're going to talk about, and uh, if they wanted to get it, they it's a, it's available for anyone, right? Uh, yeah, I ended up uh, in in desperation. I, I try like gangbusters to avoid Java emulators. Yeah. Uh, just because it's it, it's not an area that I'm real comfortable with. And if someone really wanted to screw up my day, they could they could do it, and I wouldn't even know it. It's Java. Enough said. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I eventually there are a couple Java emulators out there, but there was one particular one that has games already in the memory already basically ready to go and yeah. where we were struggling so much with getting the uh games to be recognized uh finding this was just a a grail 
It was yeah. an absolute holy grail. It actually and had a couple games on it that I would have picked anyway, so it worked out exactly, pretty well. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's what we took a look at. And uh, it, we still had to learn the commands, and they were actually very handily uh, mapped out for you. Yeah. There's a, we a weird thing where you have to put a uh, left bracket at the beginning of all your lines to do your commands. I don't know if that's standard or if that was something just... Uh, uh, having to do with the the built-in stuff of this emulator but i would have never you know thought to do that natively yeah um but and, and of course there are different raw there are different types of nascoms and so they they would take different commands so it was also complicated yeah you know so it <laughs> but we got there we got there we got there and so, we always do so what we're going to do is just sort of discuss these and and talk about them so let's go ahead Brent, what, which one would you like to tackle first well, did you actually uh, capture footage from Tic Tac Toe? I did. All right, let's oh, no, go ahead no. and pull it. No, I didn't know. Not Tic Tac Toe. I didn't bother. Okay, Tic Tac Toe is exactly what you would think. Yeah, it's a big screen with Tic Tac Toe, and uh, you can play against a computer or another player. It's Tic Tac Toe. Yeah, uh, there's not a whole lot more to say yeah, about that it. one. I skipped over. I'd say even that one was a little bit too basic for me. So what? Which one? Let's would you go like ahead. To start with? Let's fire up Asteroids. Okay. Asteroids was really impressive. <clears throat> so. Asteroids. Now, th this may stun some of you, but this is a a Stephen Weller uh, game. As you can see, the level nine computer they came up a lot. Absolutely. Uh, this is from '82, as it said there. And what you've got here is a uh, a, a very low uh, low resolution version of, of Asteroids. <clears throat> now, I'll tell you, uh, when this came up, this is funny because this is actually the first game I tried out, and uh, man, I was. <laughs> I was pretty impressed. Stunned. Uh, it Brent. reminds you of of uh, asteroids on the Atari 2600. At least it did me. Well, I mean, the uh, uh, first of all, I could. This is me playing at a much higher level than start. Uh, but uh, the the uh, 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 the the uh, ability for the asteroids to split off and to move in their own directions uh, was it was cool. It had everything that you would expect asteroids to have. Yep. I will say the one thing about a lot of these games is they had real wacky control. Uh, yeah, you can yeah, yeah, this was completely controlled with up, down, left, right. Yeah, this you can see right here. I kept this in. Uh, if you're watching home, this is me actually loading up the game. You have to put the bracket in. So, but the asteroids, uh, they gave you they gave you the left, right. Uh, you've got your thrust, and you've got hyperspace there. Uh, which is nice, and the ability to start at whatever level you want, which is nice. Yeah, now, because one is really slow. Do you know? Did you during your research? Did you did you notice if uh, these games had been sold or were these all just gimmies? I mean, I'm assuming you these were all things that you would just pass around. I, I, I don't can't know if they imagine sold there was be a market for to be for these to be sold. I I, uh, I, I certainly did not. I mean, in these particular games, I certainly did not see anywhere. Where there was box art or uh, uh, anything like that. Well, yeah. So that, if that, they were sold, they I, I did not see it. I looked over a lot of the games, and I'd heard of some of the people that made the game. So yes, absolutely. I, I would assume I, they, there may have been some sort of market for buying these. I don't. I that I just don't know. I no one was really talking about it. But yeah, getting back to asteroids, uh, it plays great. I mean, your ship is obviously tiny, uh, but I mean it, it plays just like you would expect. The hyperspace works just like you would expect. The uh, asteroids bust up just like you would expect. Uh, in fact, they would bust into smaller pieces than I would have thought. Like right, there, I'd say your second level in that'd be pretty small, but they actually break again, which is pretty cool. The, yeah. the, the controls I struggled mightily though. Uh, the, the way they've got it rigged up was a really goofy. Uh, with your arrow keys doing three, uh, doing bizarre. I didn't like the way they had it set up. You, you would turn, think turn left and right would be left and right, right. but it's not. It's, it's left it's and up. Left and up. <laughs> yeah, and so I kept thrusting when I wanted to turn, and so that would drive me nuts. What did you think of this one? I I really enjoyed it. I I'm not a huge asteroid fan, right? Yeah. Uh, just not my not my game for whatever reason. However, I think that this captures everything that you would want from the game. Yeah. And it's a hundred percent playable. I mean, if you wanted to play a game of Asteroids and this was what you had, you would be satisfied. Yeah. I think uh, Stephen Weller did a good job there on this one. A an excellent job. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I give, I give uh, if you want to play uh, some Asteroids on your NASCOM, you got a winner here. 
Absolutely. Brent, let's move on to Cycles. Uh, this game actually had a couple names, uh, but uh, we call it Cycles. They call it Surround when you load it up. This is another level 9 game, uh, Brent. Yep. This is uh, basically uh, Snake, or, or and that's not true. It's more like uh, Tron Light, cycle. Light Cycles. I like the fact that you that your character just stands still and just moves. <laughs> he just moves around, uh, and light comes out of his hiney. Uh, but or his uh, face, depending on which way you're facing. Yeah, uh, this is a game where you uh, compete against a, either the computer or another player. Hey, how about that, yeah. Brent? Two player action on the NASCOM, uh, and and you've got uh, uh, sp- you, again you could pick the your speed level. The speed levels on this range from like doable to are you kidding me? If you try to, play I was a- able to beat all the way up to level eight. Really? Uh, yeah, level nine, you just instantly die. There's it's- no, I don't, I don't think it's physically possible to, and that was running at four, uh, four hertz. Yeah. Now this, so, this wasn't as graphically impressive as Asteroids or as absolutely fun. Absolutely not. No. Uh, but the controls did make more sense. Uh, thankfully, you could yeah. actually, uh, uh. Uh, you could actually do so- something with it. But this is just a real basic... Uh, th- this is easily the most basic of the games we looked at. Uh, it's just straight up light cycle. Uh, but it's okay. I, I will I- I will give it points for uh, for uh, it functions. two players. I do like the fact that when you exit, it thanks you for playing its game and tells you yeah. to have a nice day. <laughs> That's a po- It's a polite game of, of, of trying light cycle. So. Um, I mean, the controls were usually responsive you do have to hit the key uh you when your guy is making the movement you can't hit the key it won't register um it it was okay i enjoy that it allowed nine levels of speed uh i i just would have liked something different for your icon than a person Uh, especially if you're if the other enemy was some kind of humanoid shape I think it would have been okay, but it was a uh, uh, club like you'd see on a deck of cards. He looks more like the Ace of Spades. He looks like uh, the Sp- it, Ace of Spades. It, it could certainly be a spade as well. It, it's kind of that in that between. Too. <clears throat> we love, but you, uh, uh, yeah, this this one I did not actually play much of at all. Yeah, it's not. Oh, it didn't take me place of this one. Now, Brent, here's one that I struggled with, but I think you re- really enjoyed uh, the old Piranha. Uh, Brent. Yes. Now, t- tell the people, I'll let you run the show on this, but tell the people about Piranha here. Uh, Piranha is a game where you, well, it, the story is that you, you've you fallen into the Amazon River and you've got to avoid these piranhas that are attacking you. I hate when that and happens. And apparently, if the piranhas run into each other, they'll eat each other. So yeah. you can uh, uh, get away from them that way. This is one, obviously, a one-screen game. You start in the center and you... Uh, have the entire screen to run around. There are no obstacles themselves on the screen except for the piranhas. And the piranhas will come from all sides of the screen uh, in any possible border starting location and swim towards you. Um, As they swim, they uh, will kind of bunch up and make it a little bit harder to dodge. And if you can get them to run into themselves they will disappear and you'll get more points for it. And this is a points game. Uh, Something very unique of this is um, if you double tap, your character moves twice the speed. So it gives you an extra level of maneuverability. Very nice. Very nice there. Uh, Also, you can hit, after you score so many points, you can hit A and turn on autopilot, and the game will play itself. That was strange. It won't, That's it like, won't uh, play itself flawlessly. You you can't just rely on it forever. Yeah. Uh, but you can uh, uh, ha- you can have step away for a moment, and it will play itself and run around itself. Did, I've never seen a game that did that. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's very strange. Can you explain? I had, I had trouble understanding the concepts here of what you needed to do exactly. Avoid. It was, it's all about just avoiding. How long does it, your poor guy have to stay in the river? Forever. For, so he, and, Then why are you struggling to survive? Just let no, no, yourself no. die. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, all, it's a point game. So you play for high score. Yeah. And the longer the game goes on, the more piranha 
that are released into the river. Yeah. And like I said, you eventually you have to get them to collide with each other. And they're smart. They're smart enough that they don't want to collide with each other. Um, different levels will go will, is different speeds worth of the game. Uh, and it, it's I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, being able to double tap to get that extra movement speed, it, it sends you just over the edge of out of control. Uh, but sometimes you have to do it. And this game allows uh, lets you move in all eight uh, directions. You know, you're up, down, left, right, and all the diagonals by hitting both keys together. And it feels good. The controls are very responsive. Uh, and you really need that responsiveness because uh, when you get a lot of piranhas, which are just represented as asterisks, when you get a lot of them on the screen, I mean, I probably had 15 or 20 of them on the screen at one time. Yeah. Swimming around in circles, uh, avoiding them. And when they hit and blow up, you can actually blow up more than just two at a time. You can blow up whole chunks of them at a time and get huge score. So I really enjoyed this game. This was probably my favorite of the bunch, even though it wasn't necessarily graphically the best. Uh, I feel like it played the best. You can see if you're watching home, there's a little A up beside my score. That means it's on autopilot. Yeah, uh, and yeah. That that A does not stand for Aaron. It, yeah, no, it doesn't. Because you can see once I turn that on, it went from meandering idiot to super god of the water, like Tarzan. Uh, but yeah, this I will say this is probably this is it's not probably this is definitely the most clever, most original title that we looked at. Yeah. Uh, it was it wasn't my favorite, but uh, because I I had had trouble with it, but it was still pretty good, and it, it's certainly very playable and unique. I'd say this is the if you're gonna play any of these games, this is probably the one you're gonna want to try out, man. I thought this was pretty good, uh, so I thought that was a winner. So the last game we looked at, you listen every old incredibly old system they got to have one thing don't they bro well, you got to have two things you got to have there you've got to have your classic games on here your space invaders your pac-mans your asteroids and of course you got to have scramble yep. scramble one of my favorite games uh and a game that i, I really enjoy you know this and and, and cobra super cobra all the, all the fun games from back in the day this one is a problem. Would you say this is the most graphically interesting game we looked at? Absolutely. Uh, we'll say I'm not real keen on the way your ship looks, uh, but uh, oh, I think it looks good. Well, it looks kind of it looks kind of iffy to me, man. No, I think it looks good. Uh, but I think, is, I think this you got to remember what you're working with, man. Right, right. This is your yeah. This is your classic scramble game, except for the fact that it, once again, uh, this thing was hard as heck to control. Uh, the the control keys are are this is like remember when you used to play Defender in the arcade you had like fifty buttons there that's the way I felt playing this you're tapping crap to shoot you're tapping crap to drop the bombs then you've got the four directions and it was it was tough it's uh, that's a lot of button tapping this game would have done well uh, on a joystick. At the time. I'll tell you right now, I'm watching your demo play footage, right? Yeah. You're playing completely wrong. Well, no kidding. I'm struggling uh, with the controls here. Uh, I This is probably, even though I enjoyed Piranha the most, Scramble is definitely the game I played the most. Uh, and you have got to get into the ravines and and use your forward shooting gun. Yeah. You cannot rely on your bombs. You notice by uh, the way when this came through, I just wanted to hop in. This was called we've got it listed as scroll, but actually uh, from what the game says, it's this game is called I think it was called Raider. Did you see that as a pop? I yes. didn't notice that. I, yes. I didn't even notice that last night when I was playing it. Uh so if you're looking for this one, you'll probably I, although it was listed as scramble and the that's the funny thing about these games. They're they're not they don't screw around with a, a, their fake names. When you're loading these things, they're called asteroids, or I mean, they they call them what they're cloning, effectively. But this yeah. one, if you're looking for it, it, looks like it's called Raider. So yeah, you, and the, go ahead. the when you play this, it, you could run out of fuel, just oh, like yeah. the, big time. what you would expect. Bombing fuel is incredibly difficult. You have to get in the trenches, you have to fly down into the valleys and shoot your fuel. It's the only way to survive past uh, 500 clicks. Um, I really, really 
enjoyed the challenge of this game. I was able to feel myself improve. I was getting farther and farther. I really wanted to see if it had the actual cave sections. Yeah. You know, where you have Oh, got, man, that'd be, that'd be tough. I went very, very far. Yeah. Very, very far into the game, and I was never able to uh, get that to happen. Um, something to mention that was brought up in chat is while our cardinal directions up, down, left, right on a modern keyboard are T-shaped, uh, on the setup of the NASCOM, they weren't. They were squ in a square. So that's why the up or the left and up was left and right in Asteroids. And that happened a lot of old machines. On the NASCOM, like it made sense. Yeah. I just assume that, yeah, because that that happens quite often on those on those old And thank you, Frodo, for pointing that out, and it, that is definitely worth yeah. mentioning. I um, uh, I thought this scramble was a... did not use arrow keys; it used uh, letter keys. Yeah, just... and, and so did uh, um, Piranha. Yeah, that, and actually, that worked out pretty well. The, this one, the the uh, the key setup that was particularly goofy. That's why this was not like uh, this. This is too. You much know, it for didn't me. bother me once I like... got used to it. It, it this uh, the scramble game did not bother me. Uh, one thing I do want to point out as this thing flies by here is look at the uh, level of detail on the actual line that makes up the hillside. Yeah, uh, it's, it's magnificent. It's a smooth. I mean, it's it's a they did a great job. Yeah, uh, with that. I mean, it looks nice, and you could certainly see where you could put together any sort of like a, a, like a lunar lander or something. I mean, it, it looks good. It's almost a Vectrix like in, in a way. You've got that kind of vectory looking line, and the scrolling is fairly smooth. You know, this I'll have to say, Brent. I had the same feeling when we tried out the uh, the Dick Smith System eighty. Uh, is that you? You wouldn't think a game of this age would be able to, or a system like this would be able to do anything like this. It always blows my mind. I mean, we were looking at some pretty tight graphics uh, for you know for nineteen eighty. 1980, you know, this is this look nice. I mean, it's just yeah. you've got something here, and you've also probably got some pretty darn talented programmers. You Did know? you uh, mess with the uh, megahertz on this? I, I actually I, I slowed I did a couple scramble times. down. Yeah. Um, oh really? I played on a slower system and had a, and it's obviously jerkier. Yeah. Uh, but Much I like had yourself. a better experience overall with it. At the speed it runs, uh, I think uh, natively we played everything at four. Uh, I slowed it down to two, and and it it played easier. Well, duh. So what you're saying is you were talking about how great and how far you got this. You cheated. You turned no, the no, system no. speed down. No, no, no. Here's the thing, though, Aaron. It <clears throat> plays slower, but it also plays jerkier. That, like I said, that, that explains the compatibility there. But my point is, listen, I could slow down any game to play it frame by frame. I'd be some kind of super god. So no. basically, I'm declaring myself champion of normal speed raider. Brent. No, I play. I definitely played it at both. Come I on. definitely played it at... Frodo's standing and... up for you in the chat. Come on, Frodo. Listen, you got to man up. Play this thing at full speed, yo. Let me give me that it, crap. Aaron wants to play it on a system that didn't exist. I got it. I got it. Take off. Take off. Regardless, you. regardless, this was an incredibly impressive thing. Uh, it, I would have been three when this came out, so I obviously could not have uh, appreciated it as a child. But in my adult years, looking at back at where computers have come from and where they are today, it it's absolutely amazing. You know, it's absolutely amazing mm -hmm. that. That someone took the time to start from here, because if we didn't have a start, we would never be where we are today. Yes. And uh, uh, it, my big hats off to these guys who really soldiered through during these NASCOM type er eras and uh, allowed us to get to where we are today. You know, <clears throat> just in closing, uh, I will say that the struggle. It's funny because Frodo was just saying the like. He was like, we know we had trouble. I, I had to be able to work on last Sunday. I was like, well, that's a kick in the pants. But the one thing about the struggle, I go, we're dumb guys. Frodo's a genius. Uh, but the one thing about the struggle is you get, I learned a ton. You, I was in there hacking away in the, uh, 
trying with, with commands. I, I feel like I got close to this machine that I probably should have. Trying to yeah. load stuff. I was doing stuff with the cassette. I was supposed. I was add. I was putting on additional stuff that had been put in, and doing a lot of research on it. And I had to say, uh, once again, your stupidity, your rambunctiousness to put pieces on the wheel, actually paid off. Because much like last week uh, with the with the uh, Cipico, I actually enjoyed this probably more than I had any right to, because it was a, a good time, a very yep. good time. Hey. You know, I'll- the wheel, the wheel doesn't steer, steer us wrong, Aaron. It knows what we need and when we need it. You know, you when you utter its name, it doth appear. Oh. Bam, here it comes. Brent, this week, we've made some additions. Uh, we've got the, uh, as our Retro Rewind piece, I've stuck back on the Jupiter Ace. You know, that was one of our more popular episodes, Brent, the old Jupiter Ace. Absolutely. Who'd have figured it, man? And as our new piece this week... We have stuck on... This is controversial, Brent. You've just called this one Amiga versus Atari ST. This will be a, one of these battle of the system type gimmicks, uh, I assume. So anything could happen. Uh, Brent, tell them about these locked pieces, my friend. We have three locked pieces from the Fallen shows. And they will stay on the wheel even if they are spun. And they will stay on the wheel... At least until Thanks for Giving, and we might even keep them on longer than that. Uh, unfortunately, two of those locked pieces have yet to been spun. I think today we're going to hit one. Though. All right, Brad, I'm going to spin this sucker. Here we go. All right, this thing's spinning. It was a good spin this week. What are we going to get? Here it is, and it is... Oh, no. It's Bizarro Spin, Brent. Oh, okay. Brent, tell everyone what that means. And also, because I don't remember, what does that mean? Bizarro Spin means we're going to spin it again, and we're going to pick games for each other to review. Holy smokes. So whatever it comes up on, I will be picking Aaron's game, and Aaron will be picking my game. All right. Well, this is where we basically hose each other. That's All right. it. This has only come up once ever, had the deal Bizarro Spin. Twice, I believe. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to spin it again. What if Bizarro Spin comes up again, Brent? Uh, they, I guess they switch back. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's the Atari 1200XL Atari locked piece, Brent. Bam. Bam. I, it's I Atari felt it. time. I felt it. You felt that? I did. I told, told you. Locked piece time. So, so what we that means is... We will be taking is, a look at the Atari 1200 again. And we'll be giving each other the game. That's right. Interesting. Now we we haven't looked at the Atari eight bit for a long time on this show. In fact, because that's one of the in fact the very first episode of ARG presents was an Atari eight bit show uh, where we covered a Caverns of Mars, I believe was the title. Uh, so that will be uh, fun to go back to, and we will be picking each other's games, bro. We have a deadline on that Tuesday. It sounds good, or. To pick uh, each other's games. Wednesday, Wednesday at the latest. Wednesday's usually the day we give ourselves. Very good, very good. So, uh, this is where we wrap this sucker up. Red, do you want to give any shout-outs or any information out there? Uh, I want to say hello to a few people in chat. We've got Roushies, Pixels at Dawn, Frodo, Hermski, making a late appearance, but a welcome appearance as always. Uh, Mitsuyama. Uh, we got the Bass. We got... Uh, Dave Velociraptor. And let me just real quick pop in and say hello to some of our lurkers. Co Brian. We've got uh Hamo One. And let's grab one more here from the bottom of the list. Vertigo Pro Z. Or Proz, perhaps. Very good. Very good. Thanks for everybody for uh checking us out today. We appreciate that, Brent. Uh any final thoughts before we put this sucker to bed? You know, it was a rough week, uh, but I really, this is I, these are the kind of weeks that I'm going to really remember because this is a system I'd never heard about and learned so much and learned a lot of respect for the people of this era. So uh, I'm glad it got spun. I very, really am. Very good, very good. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you all, and we will catch you again next week for Bizarro Atari 1200XL. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the show. 
Quick shout out to all of our YouTube subscribers and Twitch followers. A special thank you to Duncan Styles for our vector graphics and Bartbit for our amazing music. Would you like to keep ARG spinning for as little as a dollar a month? You can do so at anchor.fm slash ARG presents. Supporters get entry into the Amigos Discord channel as well as their name called out in the credits. Supporters like these fine folks, Z9K9, Anthony Jarvis, Graham W. Vetke, Terry Howard, Gary Heather, John Schaller, The Slow Norris, Frodo NL, Steve Rasmussen, Chris Foles, Mitsuyama, Retro Algae, Hermsky, John Dackman, and Jerry Dennington. Don't want to explain another credit card bill? That's okay too. You can help us out by leaving us a positive review on Spotify and Apple iTunes. Have an idea for a wheel piece? Send it to us at argpresents at mail.com. We record live every Sunday at 9 a.m. EDT on Twitch. Hope to see you there.